there's normal structure, you know. What is the composition of breast? What are the two main elements in the breast? We have the ducts and the ducts. Ducts and lobules. Okay. This type of activity you will find in ducts and lobules. Is it one layer or two layers? Two layers. And my idea. And in between these epithelial ducts uh, or the lobules, in between the lobules, what you will find? What is the other tissue? One is the epithelial tissue, which forms the ducts. <laughs> Surrounding these structures, in between the lobules and in the lobule itself, interlobular. Except the epithelial, there is one more tissue, which type? Supporting tissue, which tissue is there? Stroma, connective tissue. And what else? One more type of tissue is there, which is very important. Again, the quantity of which is increased with time. Yes. Adipose. So adipose tissue, stroma, and and you can have the tumors arising from all these in the breast. So tumors can be derived from all. So we have the benign tumors, we have the malignant tumors. Yes. Benign tumors can be composed of both epithelial as well as the stromal component. But most of the common benign lesions, they are stromal in origin. The first one is fibroadenoma. Okay? Fibroadenoma. This is a biphasic tumor. Biphasic means it consists of two things. One is the epithelial and another is the stroma. So two components are there. Okay? Biphasic tumor composed of fibroblastic stroma and the epithelial component which is formed by the glands. So two components are there. But the true new truly neoplastic component, we have the two components, but we should know what is the true truly neoplastic component. That is the stromal component. Okay? Got it? It is composed of both. But what is the truly neoplastic component? It is the stromal component. Okay? Truly neoplastic is the stromal component. So this is the most common benign neoplasm of the female breast. Most common. This is the most common. If you see a swelling, most commonly it can be the fibroid, the benign tumor of the breast. And the peak incidence is a young age, third decade of life. 20 years to 30 years. Okay? Third decade of life. It is solitary, discrete. Solitary, discrete. Solitary, one single, discrete, delineated from the surrounding structures, not attached to anything. And you can freely move it. Even if you touch it, suppose I am doing the affinity, I will touch it, it will slip away from my hand. Like a mouse. Yes. The mouse, it will slip away. That is why we call it as breast mouse also. Even I have done the many affinities. So when I was you know, picking, so from the clinical impression, it slips out. So it means it is fibroid. This is the clinical impression. So we write on that and we see till we get the report. Huh? So breast pause and the hormone which is responsible for its growth is the estrogen. Okay? Yes, Especially why why we say this? Because it increases during the menstrual period. Okay? And it also increases during the pregnancy, the size. And one more thing, after the menopause, when there is no estrogen, the size regresses. Yes, reduces. And many of these will eventually become calcified. Huh? So it means the estrogen is responsible for the growth. Maybe they have the receptors for the estrogen. So estrogen attaches and causes the growth. So this is the fibroadenoma. But microscopically, what you will find now? They are firm masses, 1 to 10 centimeters. So they can be small, they can be big also. So you see a big swelling, it doesn't mean always it is carcinoma. It can be a giant fibroadenoma, big fibroadenoma. So cut section will be tan, white in color with yellowish specks. And histologically, you will find two components. One is the fibroblast, fibroblastic stroma. Another is the epithelial component. So fibroblastic stroma with ducts of various sizes and shapes. Now the thing is, when you can see it, you will find two types. Or a mixed type. What are the two types? Sometimes the stroma grows around the ducts. It grows around the ducts without compressing them. So the ducts remain open. They remain open like this. They remain open. 
Sometimes the stoma grows more and it compresses the guts. They become as if they are closed. They become compressed, closed. So pericanalicular adenoma is one in which the ductal spaces remain open and long to open. And there is one called intracanalicular, in which the stromal proliferation is so much that it compresses the ducts, okay, and makes them slits or irregular shaped or star shaped. So I will show you the diagram. The first one is the pericanalicular. The stroma is growing here. This is the stroma. This is the fibroadenoma. This is mixed soil stroma, bluish color. You can see the bluish tinge. Huh? So this is the stroma, and most of the ducts here. It is open. It is open. It is open. It is open. This one is compressed. This one is compressed. I will show, tell you the reason why. But most of the ducts they are wrong to over and open. Okay. Next one here. See the proliferation of the stroma. All the ducts become compressed and slit-like. Huh? Compressed. These are the ducts. They are compressed and slit-like. So this is the, but what you will find, most of the fibroadenoma, they consist of a mixture of the two. Some parts will be like this, some parts will be like this. So here, in this, you have some ducts which are open, but some are compressed. But depending upon which part is predominant, we call it that. But the pathologist doesn't need to give the diagnosis like pericanalicular adenoma or intracanalicular, because it doesn't have a clinical significance. It will not alter the mode of treatment. So we say fibroadenoma. We say fibroadenoma in the report. So this is cut section. Around it, most of the time, spherical, well surface. Like this is the fibroadenoma. Okay? This is the remaining breast tissue which has been excised. This is the fibroadenoma. Is it clear? Try to come in time. Because Maybe after some time we will enforce this. So this door will be closed from inside. You might have seen this thing. Does it feel full? It can be painful. It can be painful also. Depending upon, you know, if any swelling is, you know, big, what it will do? It will overgrow this blood supply. Isn't it? It can even lead to necrosis inside it. Because some of the cells will not be able to get the nutrition properly. Depending upon the size and the rate of the growth, it can be painful also. Or depending upon the thing that it will compress the surrounding nerves, huh? it can be painful. So fibroadenoma, the most common benign neoplasm, variable in size, can be small, can be big like giant fibroadenoma. Two types are there, pericanalicular and intracanalicular. And the truly neoplastic component is the stromal component. This is important. Huh? The second benign tumor is phyllides tumor. What? Phyllides tumor. It is again a biphasic tumor consisting of both neoplastic stromal cells and the glands. But here, what is the difference between the two? Fibroadenoma on one side and phyllides. <coughs> that is also stromal. Here also that is the neoplastic component is the stromal. Here also neoplastic component is the stromal component. But the difference is the stroma is much more cellular here in this case. It is so much cellular and abundant. So stromal element is more cellular and abundant and it leads to the formation of leaf-like projection. So epithelium becomes leaf-like. More bone proliferation of stroma. So epithelium becomes leaf-like, broad leaf-like structures. That is why we call it phyllodes. phyllodes. It is derived from the word phyllodesis. Okay, it is a Greek word. Okay, most of the words derivation is from Greek or Latin. So it is derived from the Greek word phyllodesis. So this is the phyllides tumor. Previously we used to call it cystosarcoma phyllides. What was the reason? What was the reason? Sarcoma malignancy. Sarcoma malignancy. Cysto means big cyst-like spaces. So cystosarcoma phyllides. Phyllides mean leaf. Because some of the phyllides tumors were very big. They were very big and the clinicians and doctors thought that they were malignant. But most of the phyllides tumor they are benign. Most of the phyllides tumor they are benign. But we have the malignant phyllides. 
how you can say that this is a benign and this is a malignant phyllite? Malignant phyllites will have increased cellularity, more anaplasia, okay, more mitotic activity. It will rapidly increase in size and will infiltrate the surrounding structures. It will have the malignant features. Malignant features, you know, high mitotic activity, anaplasia, high NC ratio, like all pleomorphism. But most of these tumors remain localized at in the breast. But they can recur. If you remove them, they can recur. So most remain like localized and can be cured by the excision also. You remove it, it will not. If it is a benign, it will not recur also. But malignant lesions, although they remain localized, but they will recur. They will come again. Yes. And some, like out of all the malignancy, malignancies, 15 percent of the cases are fully malignant. Means they will metastasize. 15 percent of them. So if you find 100 malignant cases, only 15 percent have the potential to disseminate or metastasize. So this is the phyllite tumor. I will then I will summarize. It will be more easy. Look, range in size from a few centimeters to very huge lesions, more than 10 centimeters, big breast. So on one you will say, oh, this is malignant. Big, big, very big. I don't do not include a picture. Maybe in lab I will have to include it. So common in the old age. So fibroid adenoma, young age, 20 to 30, six decades. So it consists of a mixoid cellular stoma. Look, this is cellular. There is so much growth that the epithelium becomes leaf-like. Mm. You know, broad leaves, leaves. Huh? What do you call leaves in Arabic? Varkat. So separated by long plaques of compressed. So this becomes compressed. The epithelial tissue becomes compressed, and there are spaces in between, isn't it? These spaces, cleft-like spaces. So there is cellular mixoid stroma, which compresses the epithelial tissue, forms leaf-like projections, surrounded by the cleft plaques. And the glands, if you will find, will, these will be compressed and distorted. So if you will find some glands, these will be compressed and look this gland, it's compressed and distorted. So much growth. Yeah, glands means ducts, or you can find the asini also smaller ones. Is it clear? No, phyllite tumor is the second most common benign malignant, uh, benign uh, breast tumor. But in some cases, it can be malignancy, malignant also. Malignancy will be on the basis of increased cellularity, anaplasia, increased mitotic activity, and infiltration into the surrounding structures. And phyllite tumor again is biphasic, but there is more and more stromal proliferation as compared to the glands. And it will compress the surrounding glands and it will cause the epithelium to find to form leaf-like projections. That is why it is called as phyllites. Only 15% of the malignant tumors will have the ability to metastasize. So sister sarcoma phyllite, which was initially used, it is a misnomer because most of these are benign. These are not benign. So two benign tumors, fibroadenoma. And the next one was phyllite tumor. But some of the phyllite tumor can be malignant also. Then the third benign tumor is duct papilloma. Duct in the duct. Papilloma means papillary like projection. So papilloma within the duct. But it is not within all the ducts. It is within a specific duct, which is the lactiferous duct or the sinus. Lactiferous duct. You have only how many lactiferous ducts you have in it? Huh? I think around you know, 10 to 14 yes. ducts are there, like the main lactiferous ducts, which will open into the lactiferous sinuses, which will open into the nipple. So we have this present in the main lactiferous duct or the sinuses. So this is a main duct, okay, this one, and there is a growth inside, papillary growth inside. Okay. So what it will lead to? The importance is it will lead to sometimes bloody discharge from the nipple. So bloody discharge is an indication of malignancy. So if you have a patient who is coming with bloody discharge, the first thing is which is going to come into your mind is malignancy. But 
The second thing is duct papilloma also. It's a benign thing, totally benign thing. So differential diagnosis you will keep two things mostly. So one is the carcinoma breast, second is the duct papilloma. What is the age? It occurs in the pre-menopausal woman, just before the menopause. Huh? Pre-menopausal woman. Most of the time solitary, one lesion. Within the lactiferous duct or sinuses. And it is very small, less than one centimeter. But it will lead to bloody discharge, so you are worried about this. What you will find? You will find delicate branching. You know, look, just like a tree, it is branching. Huh? Branches are there. And you will have multiple papillae. These are the papillae. Papillae have a fibrovascular core inside and covered by the epithelium. Okay? Core inside covered by the epithelium. So this is what you will find in duct papilloma. So duct papilloma, single solitary swelling, inside lactiferous duct or sinus. The importance clinically is confusion with the cast. But it's a totally benign thing. So you will have to remove the duct along with the papillary structure. It will cure. This may be uh, become uh, malignant. No. Pilaris tumor can be benign or malignant, isn't it? Fibroadenoma also carries some risk. Some risk. Slight risk of going into the malignancy. So even if you find the fibroadenoma, better to remove it. Okay? Because you will study. You might have studied how many cases can you know relative risk is. 1.5, 2% like, you know, atypical hyperplasia and diabetes. So here also you have some risk, some risk is there. Not in ductal papilloma, in fibroidic yes, Solitary means one lesion, one. No, one lesion. One mass. Solitary means one. Multiple means more than one. It is not referring to the breast, to the mass. No, within is the benign, alas. No, the breast casino. I hope I am not too fast. Be because the lecture is big, so I have to, you know, complete in time. So breast carcinoma is very, very important. Everywhere. Everywhere. Throughout the world. Huh? So breast carcinoma is the most common non-skin malignancy. It means most common malignancies are the skin malignancies. In case. But when we say, we say most common non-skin malignancy. So most common non-skin malignancy in the females is breast cancer. Okay? It is only second to lung cancer in causing deaths in the females. The first most common cause of cancer related deaths in females is lung cancer and second is the breast cancer. Okay. Most common is the breast cancer but mortality is due to lung cancer more rather than the breast cancer. And a woman who lives up to the age of 90, okay, he, she has 1 in 8 chance of developing breast cancer. 90 up to now, most other people will not live up to 90. <laughs> Here, you know, young people die, you know, accidents and other things. In Saudi Arabia, it is also the first breast cancer ranked first. Statistics are, you know, somewhat, you know, older statistics. This is what I would find. So, it affected 27.4% of all the cancers. Of all the cancers in 2010, 27.4% were breast cancer. So it was the most common cancer in the females. Incidence is higher in the American populations and in the European countries. Reasons may be you know, varied. We have the geographic influences are there, dietary influences are there, environmental. So more in American and European countries. And mortality rate is dropping down from 20, initially it was 30 percent, high mortality. So if 100 women diagnosed with breast cancer, 30 percent die. Now it has dropped to 20 percent because of better techniques, better surgical techniques, better treatment. Okay. 